welcome to a most unusual sales mindset TV show. We are in lockdown and we are using using Zoom this time around. Um, we thought we wouldn't let the pandemic stop us bringing you some amazing sales insights. And to do that, I have got an A-lister with us today. And what's really amazing about Dave, Dave Davis here, who's going to introduce himself in a minute, there's a little secret. Um, 34, five years ago, Dave, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, we probably. We were in a sixth form common room together <laughs> in, uh, in, in, in Woking, in Berkshire, and uh, our, our commonalities were probably Depeche Mode, yep. playing uh, Chase the Ace, or Black mm -hmm. Mariah, or whatever we called it, and darts. Uh, That's about it. It's about it. And it's, tur it's turned out that our careers have taken us in similar paths. And after 34 years, we've seen each other for the first time today. Now, we could tell some secrets about each other that we're going to okay. try and resist. <laughs> um, <laughs> I was probably more known for having highlighted hair at the time. Um, yeah. I still have, Dave. But yeah, I think just say, <laughs> natural. <laughs> <laughs> really great to have you with us. Just, just tell Good us question. all who you are, Dave, and, uh, and and tell us about yourself. I mean, the weirdest bit about this call, Steve, is you don't look like George Michael anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll get you back for that. <laughs> <laughs> So Steve said, I'm Dave, Dave Davies, and uh, I work with technology companies, um, typically in their early years, um, helping them to define and des design their sales process, their sales plan, their sales strategy. I work with the leaders of that team to build a robust systematic sales engine. I help to develop the management team within those organizations, and I work with the sales team to simplify their prospects and behaviors and learn how to sell through an end-to-end -end process to the audience that they choose. Wow, wow. Uh, outside of that, I'm, I'm an author. I wrote a book with a partner of mine, a guy called Marcus Kauke. Um, we wrote a book on channel sales, um, which weirdly I didn't realize was in channel sales until I started writing the book and realized how many different organizations I built pretty successful, robust channels in. And the book's based on a lot of what we learned um, through doing that process. So to, tell, to just quickly tell the audience, Dave, channel sales at that highest level, how, 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 is, that, how, how is that of interest or maybe relevant to, to the listener? The yeah, you, it surprised me. I mean, five years ago, I became um, an independent. I've spent most of my life building organizations. Now I work independently. And I, I, it surprised me how many different variations on the theme of channel there is. The traditional is a large, you know, vendor technology in my world um, who sell their technology through resellers. Resellers have the clients and they have the technology. Um, but if you think about running a smaller business, um, uh, here's my channel. So I'm, um, I'm specializing in sales, why Steve's got me here. Um, I work very closely with two marketing specialists, one that does demand generation, the other that does marketing strategy. I have an HR company that I work very closely with. I have a telemarketing company that I work closely with. Um, I have somebody that does uh, employment legality, um, somebody who helps us to, do, to develop technologies for some of the business I work with, Software Development House. I've got about 20 different people who we work with you know, very, very closely, passing business between each other backwards and forwards. Um, they're my channel. Um, they, pr they promote me, I promote them, and we generate business for each other. Um, so it doesn't really matter how big or small you are. Um, Again, I'm in a franchise. I didn't realize your franchise is a channel. So it, so channel in, in itself or selling is simply the process of selling through third parties. Yeah, I, I mean, that's, I mean that's, that's really cool because, you know, as we start to look at the sales mindset uh, coach syllabus, you know, we really have to define, um, you know, our route to market, right? right. And, mm. and, and, and we come onto that in a couple of months time, in a couple of months time, but it's, it's a really good, um, important part as you because uh, 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 it has to be a coherent part of your sales plan and your sales strategy because uh, it keeps you in control right I right. guess yeah uh, right. and who, who knows the people you want to know yeah 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 who knows them and, right. and that thing about your ecosystem is really interesting right because just because you are your own 
you are your own business you, your ecosystem that you work with is an incredibly valuable and important part of your position or, uh, as, as an authority or as a leading voice right i'd imagine right yeah it does. So, so dave i'm just thinking i'm just thinking we're into this what have we had nearly four weeks yeah nearly four weeks of lockdown um and um, we were talking off air before we came in that actually your order book is looking uh, a positive and yep. that's a great thing. And I'm, I'm delighted, delighted for you. Um, Thank you. You, you're here, you're hearing many different stories around the place. I'm sure like I am that not everybody's in that great place. Nope. Um, now three more <laughs> weeks mm -hmm. minimum of, of lockdown might be feeling, uh, filling some people with quite a bit of apprehension and dread and you know a question I've got that is, I wrote a blog about back uh, uh, last week about to sell or not to sell and, and this question that's going around the social channels about you know should I be selling should I be selling you know, just at that very high level as a someone I respect in the sales training and uh, sales consultancy industries what's your view on this one well, <clears throat> I get shot down for this every now and again, but it's a phrase I'm heard to use quite a lot, which is sales solves every problem. Uh, it doesn't matter what environment we're in, um, you're not going to get yourself out of trouble by staring furiously at the phone, wishing it would ring. You're going to have to do something. Doing nothing achieves just that. Um, I, I really struggle with this concept of sale, and I know that a lot of your audience probably do too. They don't want to be seen as salespeople. They don't want to be perceived as salespeople. So stop selling. Because you can't sell anybody anything in reality. Anything you can do is help them buy. Yeah. And that's by discovering um, where they're hurting, what challenges they're facing in their business, and positioning yourself neatly right in the place from you know where they are to where they want to be. Um, this negative con 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 I don't know, get my teeth back in. This negative connection that people have with selling is the biggest problem. I mean, I do a lot of talks and, and quite often I'm doing it with a group of, you know, I guess what small business owners, startups is, I do a lot of talks in that space. First thing we do is ask them to put their hands up, who's in sales? And you get, I don't know, say there's a hundred people in the room, I might get five or six hands. And then you ask them who's in business and you get, you know, 99 hands because there's still somebody who's not completely sure why they're there. Um, and I asked the people in, in, that put their hands up, said, you probably don't realize this, but 90% of what you're doing in your business every day is selling. And as far as I'm concerned, if you're in business, you're in sales. Yeah. Uh, and the reason you can't see me today is because you want to get better at that bit, right? Then I tell them you can't sell anybody anything and they'll get really disappointed. Because <laughs> you can't. Yeah. Our job as, as, as professionals in our business is to position ourselves exactly where somebody else wants, in between where they are and where they want to be, problem solving. Yeah. You focus there how you help people and you get better and better at explaining to people how you help them. It doesn't matter what situation we're in. Okay, I, maybe you can't do roofing work right now, but you can go and forge partnerships with other building companies during this period of time. You can get together and talk to each other about how you're going to work together when you come out of this environment. I'm not stupid enough to recognize that some, I work in tech, so I'm quite lucky at the moment. There's a lot of opportunity for us, the good technology companies. Um, and, but for others, I know it's a little bit harder, but, but stopping is, is a bit like stopping your heart. The amount of power and energy it takes to get those panels fired up and get your heart started again is, is fearsome. Yeah, yeah. Just, just I, keep going. I mean, I, I mean it, it, people, that, people that have maybe been on some of my sales growth club lives or seen me at networking events might raise, raise a smile because I often put my hand, the hand up and say, who's in sales? Right. And then you see the shifty, the shifty move around the room, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and I recognize that. And, and you know, I've written a lot about the stigma of sales and I think, you know, definitely, definitely that, that, that lingers in a way that is perpetuated by some pretty bad practices for sure. Right. Um, but I think the point that you make that really resonates with me and I hope it does with the group because it's quite consistent in the content is, is actually you've got to recognize your buyer and you've got to recognize your buyer when they're in their buying moment and all you can do, is be there, have earned the right to be there when when right. when they're ready to buy, right? Mm -hmm. It's not going to happen just because you all of a sudden pitch up or put a post on LinkedIn or put something on Facebook. 
all right, you might be able to sell that commodity on Facebook as an example, but actually it's a little bit different than that, I think. I, uh, my view is that it is about earning the right. And, yes. and it's just interesting to hear you hear you say that as well. And we didn't practice that one, did we? <laughs> nope. <laughs> but you do. You got you've got to earn the right to be there. And you yeah. do that through your your understanding of yourself, your business, what you can do, but moreover them. You know, yeah. the industry, the marketplace. Very few people that, that, that take longer than ninety days to get a client and they got a client because they solved the problem. Yeah. And then you just need to go and find another ninety nine like them. So, so, so I think we'll I think we'll come on to that in a little while because I re- mm. it kind of touches to me about strategy and 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 actually it, it, let's just call it having a plan, a sales right. plan, right? Um, and but, but before that, just this sort of this where we are, three more weeks in lockdown, um, and many of us are used to doing our stuff with people in front of people right getting and and that's where we've always said that's our usp our usp our unique selling point is that we can help people by being with them Um, i've seen over the last four weeks and i imagine the next three weeks we'll see almost like a rush a stampede of putting stuff online Mm -hmm. um have you got have you got a view on on this about about how digital plays out in your you know maybe it's in your channel work that you've done maybe it's in your sales experience how do you see the online bit shaping up whilst we're in lockdown because people might naturally be thinking this is a place i've got to go it might feel like that, mightn't it? Um, uh, but we're in a situation that is, you know, business unusual. I fully respect that, but it is also temporary. Um, and we will get back to some sense of normality at some point. And that normality, whatever that will look like, um, we'll deal with it when we get there. That, talking to somebody yesterday, I think the challenge a little bit is, is, is you know, the reason why you're doing it. Are you doing it for attention? for attention or are you doing it with intention i think it's a very different thing if you're going with the intent to um change help support grow develop people um wonderful if you're doing it for attention stop bothering um yeah likes and 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 even shares to be fair on most platforms are are broadly meaningless um yeah my mum and mother-in-law are pretty good at sharing my content i'm not 100 percent sure why they're doing it it's a lovely thing right but I, i i try to do everything i do is it with the intention of helping um yeah my my phrase probably very early in management was was you know the easiest way to get to my goals is to help others get to theirs and that's not changed for for 30 plus years and so if you're doing it with the right intention i think it's great if you think bringing the noise is going to make a difference if you think just pushing yourself up online and waving furiously at the universe um it's going to make a difference it won't you're just you're just adding to the noise um so be smart about how you do it but this thing the thing that frustrates me a little bit at the moment is, is here in some of the different organizations i guess that i'm talking to as prospects more than anything else is yeah you can't talk to anybody at the moment which isn't true um because most people are like steve and i right now uh, my mobile phone is just here so if you you rang it i mean i wouldn't answer it now but i normally would mm. and uh, i'm right near a computer screen and all the tools that i use as a sales professional to prospect my business and it isn't just cold calling um are at my fingertips yeah. um and in fact i've got more time now than i've ever had um when i'm in the fury of working to prospect more effectively to talk to more people to, for more people to learn about me directly in my own voice, in my own style, with a bit more character than I can do on a video screen that was pre-prepared. Um, uh, and so I, I encourage people to, to, to not race to doing something um, for the wrong reasons. And, and you know, go online because you're making a difference and it makes sense to do that. And it is a sustainable part of your business plan, not a reaction to a short-term problem that would be better solved by prospecting now more effectively 
I mean, I really like, I really, really like, I really like that. I mean, I particularly like the attention or intention. I, I love these little sound bites, right. but, I, but I, I, I do think that's just like really, really important advice to, to underline. Yeah. You know, it, it's almost, it's almost like it has to fit. It has to fit your buyer and your client's value. Don't right. just do it because it feels like it's the right thing to do because you can. It, that, that's not the motivation. The motivation is that it fits in to what your buyer would be looking to buy and therefore it's a logical offer versus something that might seem rather desperate or out of context um, when there is a stampede to get noticed yeah it's just yeah it's it's like trying to flirt with a guy i'm uh, sorry trying to flirt with a girl across a crowded room right it's waving furiously hoping they'll notice you um yeah, i think if you're doing it for the right reasons great but i think i think you know a lot of businesses are trying to race online for, for the wrong reasons uh, and um, i love i love this because this falls again right in the sweet spot of sales in your business strategy the, the the banner behind because we talk about sales and marketing alignment we talk right. about making sure that your selling messages and your marketing messages are consistent and coherent to your client. yeah yeah and, uh, uh, so that's really interesting so let's 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 do jump into that because you know thinking about our, our audience today um listening and watching this dave you know we are we're, we're smaller businesses. We are, we're generally um, busy doing the output of what we make, what mm -hmm. we design, what we, you know, the product we have or the service we have. So that whole, that whole thing about planning, you know, you started to talk a bit there about actually you've got more time now to think about um, how you talk to your, prospects in a much more authentic uh, personality led way right so that implies that we've got time to think about our plan and our mm -hmm. and our strategy for sales um wh what's your view about the importance and it's a bit like leading leading you here right but but because i'm defining that you think it's important um, do. yeah you do good right so i can can move on so when it comes to selling and sales and for smaller businesses, why is it so important to have a sales plan? Throwaway line, if you don't have a plan, you're part of somebody else's. Um, nice and simple, and that rarely ever works out. Um, and you do need to take some time to plan so many, here's the risk, right? Most small business owners do what they do because they're good at it, yeah? It doesn't matter what it is. They're doers. Very good at what they do. And they probably used to do it for, on somebody else's shilling. And they thought, I don't want to do it for somebody else's shilling anymore. I want to do it for mine. I want to grow my own business. I want to, I want to have my own business. And so they go out and they go, hi, um, you know, I do roofing. Um, great. I don't need a roof right now. They haven't really given any thought to who they're going to talk to, why they're going to talk to them, what they're going to talk to them about. I do, we spend a lot of time when I engage, doesn't matter, the size of organization, top to bottom. What's your 122nd advert? We train them to answer these questions. Who are you? you know, your name and what you do, not your job title. Not I'm a founder of a whatever. Um, that stuff drives me mental. I'm an entrepreneur. No, you're not. Um, so who are you? What do you do? Why do you do it? Um, who do you do it to? Yeah, who's your ideal client? Why do they let you do it to them? You know, what is it that what problems have they got that you solve mm -hmm. and yeah how they feel afterwards you um, for how they feel after you've done it to them you know, what results do they get you're spending time right now if you know, your plan doesn't have to be you know hugely over complicated but plan your you know who's your who's your ideal client who your ideal prospect sorry i always say ideal client everybody says ideal client they're not they're a prospect, prospect. Yeah. well actually your ideal suspect um Yes. I don't want to get too yes. technical. Yes, 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 look, there you are, Dave. Right. Look. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, I just I got it. Who's your ideal suspect? Who who looks like might need your help? And then tell them who you are, what you do, why you do it. Yeah, who you do it to. Tell them about your other clients, who you work with. 
you know, what problems have they got? Or what problems did they have before you showed up? And what results do you get? And if you can answer those questions you know, in less than 120 seconds, and that's enough to inspire a great conversation with most people. It's, a, it's easily because of the star by which most salespeople, um, professional or non-professional, um, it closes down great conversations quick because most people don't spend any time there. And then yeah. how, much of, how much of that are you going to do? Yeah. Everybody thinks, oh, God, cold calling. That's like 100 calls a day. No, it could be 10 a day, mm. 10 a day every day. If you're that serious about growing a business and you want something that's going to grow and scale and leave a bit more of a legacy behind, and I did some stuff to some people, then make 10 calls a day. I don't care if they're to, to people who are potential partners who are already working with the clients you want to work with, or more directly calling the people you know you can help and telling them, hi, I'm here. You know, it's my favorite rule taught to me by my son, Lamental, a guy called Mike Myers, was some will, some won't, some wait, so what? It's a standing rule of marketing, prospecting. It's exactly what we do. It's, yeah. it's working to find people we can help. That's yeah. it. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, I think, I think within that, there's so there's so much when people watch this, and I do suggest they listen back, because you know the the, the, the importance here is about the level that you the, the level of intimacy. Let's call it that you know who is your ideal suspect that that right. that level of emotion which actually i'm reflecting on the uh, customer persona download that that i've put into the facebook group um it doesn't have emotion it, it doesn't Good. have that emotion and i i find that that's a really interesting thought provoking thing and you said how do they feel afterwards mm. Very interesting emotion there. So a really good question to ask anyone in the room. How does somebody feel afterwards? Because then you've got that whole knowledge before you've created that emotion, right? That you build your whole strategy and plan around. Buying's an emotional thing. Yeah. And so you better have emotion spanned all over your website and certainly in the way that you present yourself to people, whether it's networking, on the bus, or you know, in a prospecting situation. Yeah. Yeah, if you yeah. can't get them emotional about the experience with you and, and, and feeling emotional about the pain that they're in, it's incredibly difficult to move them by giving them fe features and benefit selling. Sorry, just, just about to sell jump this, on my... Tell me this, Dave. Tell me this. Yeah. <laughs> no features and benefits. Tell them what their problem is. Tell yeah. them how you fix their problems. And it's much easier to help them buy that way. Yeah. No, I mean, that's, I mean, I, I saw something and these numbers are, these numbers are wrong. They might be right if I've remembered it correctly, but you, you're talking there about prospecting and doing it every day and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a hundred. It doesn't. And you're absolutely right. It can be 10, but do it every day, build it's it part of your routine, systemize it. I mean, I saw something, I saw something from the Bill Gates said, it's like, I showed my idea to 1200 people, 300 people showed some interest. 35 did something about it 11 of them made me a billionaire right. and, yeah and, I, and, I, and, and and that's the way we got to view these things right and those 11 he could now probably know every emotion that he created in those people that's right. awesome dave just moving that moving things along mm. you, you work with many different clients yeah. um and and you've talked about the range that you see now thinking about our group here you know what what are, what are some of the common pitfalls that you see that hold businesses back when it comes to you know really unleashing the potential that they have in their in their services or their products when it comes to selling good top three uh stop sorry stop i say top three top three yeah. seemingly incapable of giving others clarity on what they do yeah what i call the none the wiser pitch um, when I walk by going, yeah, that's really interesting. Thanks for sharing with me. You've got no idea what they do. Um, it's not spending time getting clarity on how they present themselves to others. Um, single biggest problem most business owners have, small, large, indifferent, is a lack of prospecting. And believing that marketing will get you out of trouble. You're swapping your cow for, for, for some magic beans. Um, you know, it takes time. And most marketeers will tell you it takes 90 days. Um, for the marketing investment you make with them to work. It takes an hour for your prospecting behavior to work. Mm. 10 calls, I guarantee, I challenge anybody to make 100 calls to businesses in the local area 
that they know they can help and not get a client. I've never seen it happen. And I take bets, do all sorts of things. Um, you know, go find, tell people, that, tell people what you do. And of course, the single biggest problem that most people have is, in business, again, is they don't know how to develop the clients they've got. The client bought a thing from you, something you do. And most people just rock up and, and just keep dipping into that same well. They don't know how to turn the client that they've won that's taken so much effort, so much energy, blood, sweat, and tears. I'm not going to pretend sales is easy because it's not. <laughs> um, they don't know then how to turn that client into a marketplace of itself, yeah. as in finding other opportunities within the client to do other work, and you know, continuing to grow that client and working to my problem. And again, I don't want to get in the soapbox, but I hate the term account manager. I don't know what that means. It's like having a bank manager. Nobody likes getting invited in to see the bank manager. And nobody wants a call from their account manager. Um, learn how to grow your clients. How are you going to develop and how are you going to grow their business? Because if they, they, you know, they grow, you grow. Um, but more than anything else, number four, free giveaway. Most business owners are absolutely pig awful at asking their clients for referrals. And people tend to spend time with people they like. And they tend to like people that are like them and they tend to trust people that they like. And so when you're working I don't know, in my world, I work with CEOs of technology companies. And the CEOs of technology companies I work with spend time with other CEOs of other technology companies talking to each other about the businesses they run. And when I train them to get referrals for me, you know, I, I haven't really done cold calling in anger except in front of clients as a demonstration for three and a half years. Because the clients I get now in the intro are all on the on recommendation and all on referral, mm. and they say globally um, it's eighty seven percent chance of you winning the business, um, because somebody else has done all of the hard work for me. They've gone and told somebody else about the work I've done in their business, and that CEO wants to talk to me and understand if I can make the same difference in their business. Mm. And typically, that's a two hundred x return on on their investment. Mm. So. Okay, that it makes my life a lot easier, and it makes them look great. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So, no clarity about what they do. That yep. none the wiser syndrome. Mm. Lack of prospecting. Yep. So your your challenge is to do the numbers, because it will give you a result. Um, existing clients range selling or ecosystem have one <laughs> you've got to have one mm -hmm. and then referrals referrals 87 percent of the selling is done for you now those things clearly and obviously should form part of your sales plan right <laughs> absolutely what 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 is it i mean what is it you think what gets in the way what gets in the way of a is it you talked about habits you've talked about mixing in the wrong pool of people or people like you not people that are going to want what you do you know what prevents a business owner building that into a plan well if you if you put to one side we spent 35 years building sales organizations so we know how to train a salesperson on the disciplines of selling behaviors we know how many calls they need to make to have a conversation, how many conversations they need to make to have a meeting, how many meetings they need to have to make um, a second meeting, how many second meetings they need to have to make a sale. We're used to doing that, but it's okay, KPIs, OKR work. It's really easy for us. It feels like common sense. When you set up a business and you've never done sales before, and in fact, your only exposure to sales is, is moaning about the sales team you work with. Um, uh, then you don't know how to do that stuff and nobody nobody wakes up and thinks great i've got a business company registration number i'm registered for vat i need a sales trainer um that, that never happens they'll go and get a business coach and uh, here, here's a problem right so they, they'll go oh i'm not really sure how to set up a business so they get a business coach and you know 95 percent of the business coaches out there have never done sales and don't do sales anyway they rock around networking hoping to meet somebody who doesn't know how to so don't, again you don't develop the selling skills you need truly believe as a small business owner um yeah it doesn't really matter i built you know um, multi-million pound multinational companies 90 percent of the work i did was selling internally or externally 
I was selling around my business to get people to buy into me, buy into the way I thought, my vision, you know, my mission, my values, and, and, and letting those pervade throughout the business. I mean, externally, I was always, you know, the big gun rocked in at the last moment, typically when it was going to shit, excuse my language. Yeah, yeah. So wheel in Dave, he'll perform some magic. Now I get my wand out and get my little top hat out and pull a rabbit out. Um, but nobody's taught this stuff. And the, and the business coaching programs that a lot of people go on, and I've sat in some of these, even some of the, you know, the big, big names in the industry don't teach behavioral and, and they don't teach attitudinal stuff. They just teach technique. And the trouble with sales techniques, I mean, I, I, I fell in love with Sandra seven years ago so much I spent a lot of money on the business um, to be able to work with them. But I didn't fall in love with the techniques. They're great. But what I fell in love with was the focus on attitude and behaviors, you know, set mindset and, um, and disciplines, um, which most people don't have. They can't forge it. And, you know, candidly, nobody likes prospecting. I don't like ringing strangers for a living. I really don't. But I do it because I've stared. I tried it once. I spent an entire day just staring at the phone. I mean, I blinked a few times in that. Um, and it didn't ring. It didn't. Oh, that, no. that, was my, that was my first day in business. Day two, I picked it up. And it yeah. wasn't actually that heavy. And I could get it up to my ear. And I, and I, and I learned how to talk to other human beings. And you'd have thought spending 30 years building some pretty successful companies, that even when I became a sales coach and trainer, that would have been easy, but it wasn't yeah, yeah. because I didn't have my attitude set right. And that I, took I, me I, some time to develop that. And I think, I, think, I think what you highlight there, I mean, again, it's the stuff around my, so my sales mindset coach, breaking down a, a structure in the sales mindset coach syllabus and trying to make accessible to smaller business owners, these, these things that will help them overcome and help them overcome some of these, these blockers and barriers because, because it isn't about the technique of selling. <laughs> Actually, it's, it, is, it is about, it is about the, 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 the behavior. It is about the uh, deliberate nature of your activities and actions and your habits that actually drives the outcome and your sales plan gives you, if you have that in place, my view, if you have that in place, that can only help your confidence when you go forward because you're more likely to be talking to people that want to engage and listen to what you're saying because right. they're adding the value, right? And if, uh, for me, that's where the value in a plan and a strategy really cements itself. Yeah. Somebody said it and you know, I didn't invent it, but luck is simply labor under constructive knowledge. And that's what your plan looks like. There is no such thing as luck. And it's I can't remember saying it's um Gary Play. I'm no golfer. Well crazy golf. Yeah. Um uh but you know, um the the more I practice, the luckier I get. That's it. Yeah. Um and the plan, you build a plan, work the plan. If the plan's not working, you know, get some support on 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 designing developing or redeveloping the plan but build a plan work the plan that's where success comes from it's where all of your victories come from um we train people again to reward themselves here's one of my favorite lines it's not how you feel that determines how you act it's how you act that determines how you feel when you build that prospecting plan and you execute that prospecting plan and you learn to reward yourself or give yourself a pat on the back for doing the stuff that makes you feel uncomfortable that's where success comes from you know, how you act determines how you feel most people especially small businesses certainly in the early years they're living in this this environment of guilt they feel guilty for not doing enough and then what they do because they feel guilty about not doing enough is they redesign the website um versus picking up the phone and ringing people and saying hi yeah here's who i am here's what i do here's why i do it I don't, know if, I don't know if that means anything to you at all, but that's okay because you're not the only person in the world that's going to work with me. Um, and you just, you, the more you do it, the better you get it. And the, and the better you get it, the more you want to do it. Yeah. And I think, that, I think that brings it nicely back in full circle because another three weeks of lockdown, mindset, habits, behavior, 
it isn't necessarily about now sitting there and redesigning your website. It isn't necessarily sit there thinking about your rebranding. All of that, if it's part of your plan and part of your deliberate strategy, fine. But it's not about that, right? It's about building the plan and working the plan. And I think that is a great place to bring this episode of um, the, the, the Sales Talk TV show to a close because it is build a plan work the plan i think yeah. that is i think that's lovely dave just thank you ever so much it's been you know nugget after nugget of of insight there and um, please just once more just tell people where they can maybe find you if they want to follow you um if there's any sort of um uh, place that um that you know you hang out that they they might reach you just tell us again about yourself Good. Um, as a professional salesperson and one of the very earliest people invited to work on the platform, the easiest place to find me is LinkedIn. Yeah. And on LinkedIn, I'm David W. Davies. And um, just look for a photograph of a man who looks like a talking tennis ball and you're probably in a good place. <laughs> Make a connection there. All my contact details. Uh, I love nothing more than talking to business owners um, who are struggling with sales. Um, because you know, sitting down talking through those challenges, I learn more um, and hopefully I do things to help them. And it really, if ever, costs a penny to talk to me. Nice one. Now, of course, we'll, we'll talk about what it costs after you spoke to me the first time, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, you're a suspect at that moment, right? Nice. Exactly. <laughs> Dave, thanks ever so much, mate. Let, My let's pleasure, let's sir. Know it's not 34 years. <laughs> We've still got them in us. Uh, exactly. Yeah, and I'll... Uh, well, nice one thanks ever, ever so much for your time right everybody thank you. So that's the episode of sales talk tv show all about building and sustaining a, uh, a business plan a business strategy um thanks to dave again remember you can find this on youtube if you haven't subscribed to the sales mindset coach youtube channel and you can follow us as you know on the facebook group and over on linkedin We'll see you all again soon.